One of the things that we do in Rosh Chodesh Elul is that we blow the shofar for the first day of Rosh Chodesh, from the first day of Elul. We blow the shofar. And this is uh, a few reasons why we do this. Either this is anticipation for Rosh Hashanah, where we're going to blow the shofar, or it has to do with Moshe Rabbeinu ascending on Mount Sinai for the last 40 days, and then he comes down to Yom Kippur, so Allah Lekim Yisrua. Moshe eleva- is elevated on the mountain through the sound of the shofar, so we also blow the shofar. If we think about Elul and its relationship to Tishrei, its relationship to Rosh Hashanah, we have to think about Rosh Hashanah for a moment and think about what is the most important thing that we do on Rosh Hashanah. What is the mitzvah of Rosh Hashanah? What is the obligation that we need to fulfill on Rosh Hashanah? The only obligation that is a biblical obligation on Rosh Hashanah to blow the shofar. That's it. The only mitzvah, mitzvah zayom, the shofar, the only obligation that we have to do in Rosh Hashanah is to blow the shofar. Okay, let's think about blowing a shofar. What do we do when we blow a shofar? We take, essentially, a horn. A horn means something that's hollow, otherwise we can't blow into it. And we breathe deeply, blow deeply into this horn. And by blowing deeply into this horn, we create sound. Okay, that's one simple thing about blowing of the shofar. So let's think about this a second. When, we, when, the Torah, when the Torah describes the beginning of creation, and it talks about the way the world was created, the Torah says that the world, basara mamaris niver with ten utterances the world was created. That when it said, vayom Hashem Hashem said let to be light, and there was light. So how does creation come about? Creation comes about through speech. Okay? What's the difference between speech and a sound that comes out of a shofar? Or let's just call it a cry. What's the difference between a sound of a cry or speech? Speech is much more defined, yeah. Okay, it's ur- yeah, urgency. Yeah. Yeah, the hopefully. <laughs> okay. What subconscious? Breath. Okay. Okay, these are very good words. So you have breath, which is the sound of a cry, is involuntary. It's subconscious. It's natural. It's urgent. It's undifferentiated. And there's no, there's no separation. So let's think about this for a second. We say that the world is created through divine speech. But when we speak, let's use an image of self. How do we speak? How do we create words? In order for us to speak, there are thing, there's three movements that occur. The first thing that occurs is that there's an out-breath, which is called an exhale, right? That's rising up from your lungs. That fills your mouth, right? And then using your potentials of your mouth, which is your lips, your tongues, your teeth, your palate, your throat, these are the five potentials. They're called also the five gvuras you create sound. So the difference between breath and speech is the level of closeness that that wind exists within you. The way the breath exists within you is one, then it exists within your mouth is already a little bit of separation, and then when it's finally projected outward, using your five potentials of the mouth, it creates separation. So words, speech, by definition, means separation, differentiation. No, even without intent. Just the fact that a person speaks, you're taking breath, which is one, it's one sound, and you're creating one sound into different sounds. That's speech. On a deeper level, not only is the expression of speech in a place of separation, and the expression of breath in the place of unity, which another way of phrasing it is that breath is connected with the Eitz HaChayim, the tree of life, which is the tree of unity, and speech is connected with the Eitz HaDas Tovera, with the tree of knowledge, which is good and bad, separation and duality. Also the way we experience it. Let's say you're having a very intense experience. Let's say a, a traumatic experience or a very joyful experience. If you're experiencing something very deeply, you can't speak about it. You can't even sigh. If something is really painful, you can't even cry. It becomes a little less painful 
then you can cry. It becomes a little less painful, then you can speak about it. So by definition, speech is already a separation between you and the experience. The deeper you are with an experience, the less you can speak about it. And the more you can speak about it, the more separated you are from the experience. The deeper you are to the experience, you can't speak, and then you can only cry, you can only sigh, and then you can't even speak, your mouth is quiet. Like we have this in the story of the Jews in Egypt, right, where they don't cry. This is a very high level of trauma. A very high level of trauma is that people are so stuck and so in pain that they can't even cry. Then you get a person to cry, and then you get a person to speak. But the idea of speech is separation. So let's start the sentence again. Breath is one. I just want to say, Darizal writes that the tikkun of Chet Etzadas, the tikkun for the story of the, the, the Garden of Eden, where they ate from the tree of knowledge, is through the blowing of the shofar. Just so I understand what this means. How is blowing a ram's horn rectifying eating from the tree of knowledge? Okay, so let's go back again. If creation, Bereish is bar lekim, as Hashem Ayim Asarets, right? Bereish is bar lekim, is that Bereish is bar lekim. What does Bereish is bar lekim mean? In the beginning, there was a bar, there's an externalization of Elohim, or there's even a creation of Elohim. In the beginning, there's a two, a base, a dual. Why is there two? Because it, the world is being created through speech. When we talk about Vayipach Ba'ap of Nishmas Haim, that he blew into his nostrils a breath of life, and we say that's the definition of an neshama. What does that mean? That there's a creation that occurs through speech, which is already external. And then there's a creation that is more internal, which is breath. Just like with us. You have breath, then you have wind, and then you have speech. Bidvar Hashem Shamaim Nas. So the world is created through speech. Ubiruach Piv called Tzavav. And all the angels are created through wind. And where are souls created from? Breath. So there's breath, wind, speech. These are three levels, which is also called Bria, Yitzir, and Asiya. These are three levels of externalization. That one is externalizing. There's a movement of breath, a movement of wind, a movement of speech. This speech represents a spiritual vibration, like you learned in Tanya, that the world is created through the letters, the world is created through the Chafma Yisraelis Torah, through the 22 letters of the Torah, which means this is, represents a spiritual vibration. The spiritual vibration gives rise to a physical vibration. Physical vibration is energy. Energy gives rise to matter. So when you look at a stone, and you ask, what is a stone? A stone is matter. It's solid. Yet it's really not. It's really energy. That's physical energy. And really it's not. It's just, that's a vibration of a physical vibration, which is a reflection of a spiritual vibration, which is the word Evan, Aleph, Beis, Nun. That's the spiritual vibration, which comes from the wind, which comes from the breath, which comes from Hashem. So the more it's separated, the more we can call it into the world of speech. Now, every year on Rosh Hashanah, what happens on Rosh Hashanah? On Rosh Hashanah, there's a chayis chadasha, a new life force is being injected into the universe. If the, the new life force that is being injected into the universe on Rosh Hashanah, if that's new life force, the metaphor that we use is speech, wind, breath. So what is the first movement of new life force that comes into this world? Divine exhale. Divine exhale becomes divine wind, which becomes divine speech, which becomes a divine vibration, which becomes physical matter. You look at a stone, you say, a Rosh Hashanah is a renewed creation, even though every moment is a new creation. But a Rosh Hashanah is the embodiment of the whole new creation that will be throughout the next year. That's the beginning of the cosmic exhale, the divine exhale. Now, think about this a second. Normally, the flow of life, there's a divine exhale, which is that there's a new creation. And then every moment, there's also a divine, ex a divine inhale, where everything is, all the life force is returning. Every moment has a moment of chesed, which is expansion, outward, and every moment has a moment of gvura. You know, it speaks about Bilam, that, uh, that he, he knew the rega, the moment that Hashem becomes angry. You ever heard this? And, no? It, said that Bil, it says that Bilam was going to curse the people of Israel. So it, says, so it says that he knew rega, he knew that moment that Hashem becomes angry. What does that mean? That once a day, besides the fact that what does it mean once a day, but once a day, imagine Hashem is sitting there, 
first of all, that in itself it doesn't make sense, but imagine that. And once a day, for one moment, he gets angry, or she gets angry, it gets angry. What does it mean? The answer is that every moment, there's a moment of anger. What is every moment? Every moment is a moment of creating. That's the moment of chesed. And every moment is a moment of din. The world is created in the balance of tiferes. Therefore, the world is sustained. But every moment, the world is mechadish, Every moment is a new creation. If every moment is a new creation, it has to be the end of the old creation. The end of the old creation is the inhale of everything, and the next moment is the next exhale. On Rosh Hashanah, which is the beginning of the new year, we're told that we're given the ability to create the new year, to be co-creators in the creation. Just like in the beginning of creation, which is every moment, there's a hollow, there's an empty space created through the tzimtzum, through the contraction. And then there's an a exhale which creates a vibration, which creates sound, which creates physical vibration, which creates energy, which creates matter. The same thing also, we do this on Rosh Hashanah. The first moment, the waking moments of Rosh Hashanah, we take a shofar, which is hollow, which is empty, and we breathe into this tool. We take something that's empty and we fill it with life force. And what kind of sound do we create? We create an exhaled sound. Right? You create an exhale. And then what do you do right afterwards? Then you start speaking for the next 24 hours, davening and tillam. Because once you create the exhale, then you have to create the proper speech. But the first moment of Rosh Hashanah is that you're mirroring the cosmic creation that there's now a new life force coming into this world. And we do the same thing, take a hollowed space and we blow into the shofar. And this is also reflected in the four letters of the Yudke Vavke. If you take the letters Yudke Vavke, the Shalak Kaddish writes, you take your mouth, the place where you put your mouth next to the shofar is a Yud, it's a small point. What is the sound of hay? The sound of hay is breath. Both inhale and exhale. <sighs> right, that's the sound of hay. That's the perfect sound. Yud, hay, inhale, Hey, exhale, vav is the sound, is the actual sound of the shofar. The, the sound, the breath that becomes sound that eventually becomes voice. And we create this on Rosh Hashanah. So if Rosh Hashanah is the time of the exhale, the new beginning of a new year, what do we celebrate now in El? That's the time of the inhale of the entire year. That's what we're doing on, Rosh, on, on El. On Elul, we're gathering everything that we've done throughout these 11 months, and we're bringing them into ourselves. We're breathing them in, we're inhaling them, and we're owning everything. All of our life, what did we do last year, Tishrei? What did we do last year, Cheshvan, Kislev, Tevis? What did we do throughout the year? We're taking them in, this is the inhale, and then Rosh Hashanah comes and it'll be a cosmic exhale. This is the silence before the sound. And what happens in the silence before the sound Here's where we have to think about our past. Rosh Hashanah is already going to be about our future. So in the month of Elul, we have to deal with our past and deal with it in a very subtle way.